Hello, my friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. So we have an asteroid making a flyby today. Asteroid 2020 JA is going to fly by the Earth at 0.62 of a lunar distance. So that is, you know, not... Well, again, it's within a lunar distance, so we pay attention to those. But again, far enough away that there should be no danger to us at all. This is the 38th known asteroid to fly by the Earth within one lunar distance since the start of the year. That's, that's pretty busy. Pretty busy, guys. And this one's between basically 32 and 72 feet in diameter. So it, it's a significant, significant sized asteroid as we see uh, the path here. And it, it has definitely been an interesting year looking up at the skies. And here we see Halley's Comet's going to spark Monday night's meteor shower. Now this is best viewed in the southern hemisphere, but you can view it in the northern hemisphere depending on where you're at. And uh, this second meteor shower in as many weeks will dazzle the eyes of stargazers around the globe, but the light show will be battling against the glow of a nearly full moon when it reaches its peak. So the ETA Aquarids is an annual meteor shower in early May. And this year it reaches its climax on Monday night in the pre-dawn hours of Tuesday morning. And this shower happens to be one of, if not the best, in the southern hemisphere, as we we're saying. It's a moderate shower for the northern hemisphere. And again, it depends on where you're at. So when we look at this map, what's uh, the green areas that's the good areas for viewing conditions and then poor is the red and this has to do also with the weather that is expected to come so if you're in the uh, you know along the southwest you, you probably will have good viewing conditions all the way down along the south to florida as well interesting we have you know comet after comet after comet so comet swan is in the sky right now it's currently in the constellation of cetus and so right here is where you could view that you see it to the southwest of neptune and i'll have these links for you guys uh, this is the skylive.com which is a good site for keeping track of these things and you could actually put your location in there to, uh, you know, basically get a better idea of where exactly you should look, depending on where you're at. So we have that. We had Interstellar Comet, which uh, was the first known interstellar comet, 21 Borisov. It dumped 230 million liters of water as it whizzed through the solar system. So think about that. And think about the fact that, you know, this is from an, another system coming into our solar system, dumping water along the way. And, of course, water is the bringer of life, right? It is. And that really makes one curious about, like, the, the deluges we've had in, in the past. And also just like the seeding, like panspermia, you know, the seeding of life throughout uh, the universe and another mechanism, perhaps, you know, people have long thought about that with comets, you know, and there's even been the thought that, you know, life was brought to Earth by an impact of a comet, perhaps. And that's where all the water came from right. was a comet. Um, and so if you have a comet that is coming in from another uh, solar system, and even perhaps another, you know, gosh, think about it. If, if, if we have, we see stars ejected from galaxies. You know, we see that. And, and they could end up going into another galaxy. Um, it just makes you wonder about bringing new forms of life, perhaps, you know, to different planets. It sure would be interesting to see um, or to get some kind of, I don't know, unofficial, official information on that there are yeah, yeah we we've always been brought up thinking space is is completely dead and like a sterile vacuum but it's not the case you know there's bacteria out there there's viruses out there just drifting just drifting and then you have you know this interstellar comet that goes by dumping millions of liters of water hmm you know what could it have brought i mean are we gonna at some point in time, do we go through that area and perhaps some of it 
you know, makes its way into our atmosphere. And, you know, what does that mean? I mean, is that part of the big changes that we see on the planet where all different forms of life, you know, pop up? Yeah, I think, you know, we, we, we know about the dinosaurs extinction and many believe that was either an asteroid or a comet, you know, that caused that. And then there's also the thought that some of it, I mean, it could have actually been a series of volcanic eruptions. And some scientists think that there was a series of volcanic eruptions going off already, causing a big decline in, in the dinosaurs. And then we were impacted by something. You got to wonder, you know, there's these great cycles that we see of rapid change, tremendous change. You know, we have the f universal flood stories across the globe, you know, that there's one flood that apparently happened about 6,000 years ago. And then we had a big, big event at the Younger Dryas period, uh, which is like 11,700 years ago. And, you know, of course, we have the precession of the equinox, you know, so our own star is, is doing its thing, uh, transversing its own orbit. And, you know, perhaps, you know, there are these periods in time where we go through these areas where we're exposed to so many new variables, including things like perhaps going through some of uh, the leftover residue of this comet, you know, and comets like this in the past. And it just makes you wonder because, you know, there's so much going on right now uh, that it just boggles the mind. There is a lot going on, and whenever there is a comet going by, it just seems to make things even more interesting to me. The ancients always took the comets at a, as a omen of something ominous coming. And, uh, you know, we had Comet Atlas, too, which is, you know, breaking up into all these little pieces. And you got to wonder, you know, what's going to be left over of Atlas? How does it impact us, if at all? You know, do we end up flying through uh, some of the debris? Uh, does it impact other planets? It's just, uh, it's just an interesting time to be alive right now and to see all these, you know, amazing sights in the sky and all the changes that are going on, which can be most definitely disconcerting and terrifying at times. Uh, also very wondrous and making you wonder about the changes that are coming. And, you know, all the upgrades in our DNA and our body and our energy fields being thicker. It's, it's all so curious. Great time to be alive. Yeah, like you were t just talking about the fact that the uh, energy bodies are getting thicker. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it was Robert Felix. You know, he wrote the book, uh, Not by Fire, But by Ice, talking about uh, the Grand Solar Minimum. But then he also talked about evolutionary leaps and just these at the same time period as we go through these uh, earth quote-unquote changes and some of these great cataclysms there's also all of a sudden new species that pop up and out of nowhere mm -hmm. which is really super curious it, you know it's just so wonderful to be alive and watch these things happen you know yeah it's understandable with everything going on in the world that there's uh, so many people that are uh, scared, sad, depressed, um, and, and trying to trying to maintain their sanity uh, in a world that seems to have gone crazy. Um, yet, you, we must take hold of the bigger picture. Life will go on, and you know we will get through this. And it is change that's leading ultimately to a better way of of living. And uh, hopefully, it'll be one. If we are to believe all the prophecies, it'll be one that will be in balance and will be more of a golden age again. So massive change underway. Lots of interesting things in the sky. Most definitely an exciting time. Very exciting, you guys. So as always, guys, thank you for your support on Ko-Fi and Patreon. Like, share, subscribe if you have not. Make sure you click the bell to get all notifications. God bless and namaste. Namaste.